Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In this episode, I want to talk about interest rates, inflation, and what's going on in the global economy. Now, you may have heard that the Fed have increased interest rates by 50 basis points in December, and the markets have breathed a collective sigh of relief. Everybody is now relaxed that the Fed is taking its foot off the gas. This is a reduction from the 75 basis point increase in November. So this is all good news. We can all relax. We're going back to normal. But from my perspective, I'm not looking at it like that at all. The Fed have just increased interest rates by 50 basis points. That is a material increase. Earlier this year, interest rates were 0.1% in the USA. They've just increased rates by 50 basis points. So that represents an increase of five times against the actual borrowing rate at the start of this year. But obviously the situation is much, much worse than that because this 50 basis point increase is on top of the 75 basis point increase last month, which is on top of the other previous increases. So in today's video, I want to go through exactly where we are with regards to interest rates because interest rates are going up rapidly in most countries around the world right now. So we'll have a look at at the recent movements. We'll then have a look at where we are with regards to inflation because inflation is not done. We are not at the point when everybody can sit back and say, okay, we've hit our target rate, let's carry on as normal. Inflation is still incredibly high. It's over 7% in the USA and it's much higher elsewhere. So we've got a lot more pain to come. I then want to have a look at what's going on with regards to oil prices and wheat prices because they've been coming down. So I want to investigate whether or not inflation is coming down because interest rates are going up or because global prices have started to come down and look at why global prices are coming down and how that relates to interest rates. And then finally today we'll wrap up with my summary which will focus in on whether or not prices are currently being driven by supply issues or demand issues and how the movements in interest rates affect both of those situations. So let's get started on all of that. The Fed increased interest rates by 50 basis points on Wednesday the 14th of December and it's expected that the Bank of England will also follow suit with an increase of 50 basis points on Thursday the 15th and the ECB is likely to also increase by 50 basis points. Now these are material movements. So let's have a look at the G20 and see which other countries have been moving their interest rates over the course of the last month or so. This table shows interest rates for the G20. The green column is the current interest rate and the column alongside it is the rate from the previous month. Interest rates are currently 75% in Argentina, which is unbelievable, but we've discussed that before, so I won't dwell on the fact. The current rate of interest in Brazil is 13.75%, which has been held flat in December. In Mexico, interest rates are 10%, which includes an increase of 75 basis points that was brought in in November. In Turkey, current rates are 9%, which actually reflects a reduction of 150 basis points that was introduced in November. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that inflation in Turkey is above 80%. But despite that, the Turkish authorities have taken the unusual decision to start to reduce interest rates. So we've seen three consecutive reductions in interest rates. And Turkey and Russia are really the only two countries in the G20 that are currently looking to reduce their rates. Interest rates in Russia are now 7.5%. They were actually increased to 20% shortly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. However, that's been slashed right back down to 7.5%, which is actually lower than the interest rate before Russia made the invasion. Current rate of interest in South Africa is 7%, which represents a 75 basis point increase in November. In India, interest rates are now 6.25%, following a 35 basis point increase in December. Indonesia's rates are 5.25%, which represents a 50 basis point increase in November. Saudi Arabia increased their interest rates by 50 basis points in December to 5%. We've just discussed the recent 50 basis point increase in the USA to 4.5%. Interest rates in Canada are now 4.25%, which represents a 50 basis point increase in December. Chinese rates are currently 3.65%. At the time of making this video, the official rate of interest in the UK was 3%, which represented a 75 basis point increase in November. However, it's very likely by the time you're watching this that the UK will have introduced an additional 50 basis point increase and that the overall rate will be 3.5%. Korean rates are 3.25%, which represented a 25 basis point increase in November. 
Singapore's at 3.13, Australia 3.1, which reflects a recent 25 basis point increase. The official rate at the time of making this video for the euro area is 2%. However, by the time you're watching this, it's likely that another 50 basis point increase will have been introduced to 2.5%. And then finally, Switzerland's at 0.5% and Japan is at minus 0.1%. Now, there are a number of reasons why I wanted to go through that list. Firstly, you can see that there is a really big spread in terms of the official rate of interest in all of these countries in the G20. So we haven't got to a nice steady equilibrium where everybody's sitting at around about the same rate of interest. We've got the euro area, which is still below 3%. It's at 2 or 2.5% 2 if they've just brought in that new 50 basis point increase. We've got the UK at 3% or maybe 3.5% by the time you're watching this video. We've got Canada at 4.25%. We've got the USA at 4.5%. We've got India at 6.25%. We've got South Africa at 7%. We've got Mexico at 10%. We've got Brazil at 13.25%. So a massive spread. But the consistent theme that we're seeing for all of these countries is really big interest rate increases almost on a monthly basis. So they're coming in at either 75 basis points or 50 basis points, depending on where they're sitting right now in their cycle. And this compares to most countries having a 0.1% total cost of borrowing at the start of 2022. So the issue here is that the rapid increase in interest rates is going to hurt the economy. It's causing everybody that's got floating debt so whether you've got a floating mortgage or credit card debt or an overdraft or something like that, or anybody that needs to take out new loans, if you need to move house or need a car loan, all of that is going to cause a world of pain for private individuals and companies. And unfortunately, we're not at the end of this cycle because of what's going on with inflation. So it's likely that going into 2023, we will see further rapid increases in interest rates. So when I see all these news articles of people saying, oh, it's not as bad as we expected, the markets are now happy because it's only 50 basis points in America. You need to take a step back from that and look at actually where we are, what the actual rate of interest is. 4.5% official rate of interest in the USA is a huge increase to where we were at the start of this year. And it's likely that it's going to go to at least 5% during 2023. And the same applies to all of the other countries on this list. So let's have a quick look at what's going on with regards to inflation. This chart shows the current rates of inflation for the G20. Now, right at the top, we've got Argentina at 88% and Turkey at 84%. Those two are off the scale, so I won't spend much time looking at that. Russia is now at 12%, which represents a slight reduction compared to the previous month of 12.6%. Italy has stayed flat at 11.8% for the last two months. The UK is at 10.7%, which does reflect a reduction from 11.1% the previous month. The euro area is now at 10% compared with the previous month of 10.6%, so a gradual reduction. Germany is also at 10%, whereas it was previously 10.4%, so another reduction. The Netherlands inflation has come down to 9.9% from 14.3%. Mexico's down to 7.8% from 8.1%. South Africa's down to 7.4% from 76 Australia has actually seen an increase. It's at 7.3% versus 6.1%. However, Australia only reports on a quarterly basis, so we're not seeing monthly figures, unfortunately. Inflation in the USA is down to 7.1% from the previous 77 Canada has stayed flat at 6.9%. Spain has come down to 6.8% from 7.3%. Singapore is down to 6.7% from 7.5%. France has stayed flat at 62 Brazil is down to 5.9% from 6.5%. India is down to 5.9% from 68 Indonesia is down to 5.4% from 57 Japan has actually seen an increase in inflation to 3.7% from 3% previously. Switzerland's remained flat at 3%. Saudi Arabia is down to 2.9% from 3%. And China is down to 1.6% from 2.1%. So as you can see, the overriding theme is that inflation is starting to come down. Most countries have seen a reduction in November compared to where they were in October. But again, if you take a step back and look at the absolute figures, the figures are still really high. 
So the UK has seen a drop in inflation, but it's still at 10.7% compared with the target rate of 2%. So this is absolutely miles away from where the economy wants to be. And that's actually the second highest rate that the UK has seen in 40 years. So although it's a reduction, which is a positive trend, and you may see in the financial press that everybody's saying, ah, everything's now fine because inflation's coming down it's still off the scale high. And so the central bank will continue increasing interest rates until it gets closer to the target rate of 2%. And the same applies to the other countries on this list. Inflation at the moment in the Eurozone is 10% versus the target rate of 2%. In the USA, it's 7.1% versus the target of 2 In Canada, it's 6.9% versus the target of 2 So hopefully you're picking up the message that the problem here is a long way from being solved. It's gradually moving in the right direction but this could take another year, another 18 months to get down to the target rates. And therefore, we could see a lot more interest rate increases coming over the course of the next six to nine months. This chart shows the movement in the price of a barrel of Brent crude oil over the course of the last 12 months. And if you follow the channel, I'm sure you'll be familiar with the shape of this chart. So what we saw is following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there was a huge increase in oil prices. And then prices came back down a little, but they remained high all the way through until the middle of June, when the price of a barrel of oil would cost you around $120. But if you look at what's happened to the price of a barrel of oil since the middle of June, there has been a consistent reduction. And the price of a barrel of oil today is somewhere in the region of $80, which is relatively similar to what the price was this time last year. And the reason I wanted to show you this chart is that the price of oil has a big influence on inflation. So in the first part of this year, when oil prices were going up dramatically, we saw dramatic increases in inflation because the price of oil is linked to a lot of other energy prices. Therefore, it feeds through directly into things like the price of electricity, transport costs, the price of products because everybody needs energy and transport to be able to actually make products. So it's intrinsically linked to what's going on to the price of everything. So if the price of oil is linked to the price of everything, the fact that prices have been coming down over the course of the last six months means that we are starting to see the pressure on inflation being released. Now, what you often find with the price of oil is that price increases are passed through very quickly. So if you go to the pumps, you'll notice that as soon as the price of oil increases, the price that you're paying goes up. However, when the price of oil comes back down, you generally don't see that price reduction passed on so rapidly. So you may read that the price of oil has fallen 10 or 20 or 30 percent, but you don't see that when you're filling up your vehicle. And that's what's happening generally in the economy. This reduction in oil prices isn't feeding through as rapidly because a lot of the deals that are done are done on forward contract basis. So the prices that are being paid all around the world may well lag what's happening with the official oil price. So that would then take time to feed through into the economy. And essentially, that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing prices starting to come down because the price of oil has been coming down for the last six months. Now this chart shows the movement in the price of wheat over the last 12 months. And you can see that in March, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there was a huge increase in the price. It virtually doubled overnight. And global prices remained exceptionally high all the way through to the middle of July. Prices then returned to a more normalised level, rose again in September through to the middle of October. However, over the course of the last couple of months, we've seen a significant reduction in wheat prices. And once again, the reason I wanted to show you this is that food prices are having a big impact on global inflation. And as the global prices for these commodities comes down, that's releasing pressure on inflation and meaning that we're going to see a gradual reduction in global prices. And the situation is similar to what I talked about for oil, that a lot of these deals are done on a forward contract basis. So when we see a reduction in prices, it often takes a couple of months to feed through into the global economy. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video for a number of reasons. Firstly, it really annoys me when the mainstream press comes out with glib statements about everything is now fine because interest rates are not rising as rapidly as we expected. The markets have breathed a sigh of relief. 
I see that sort of headline regularly and it really frustrates me because everybody's talking about what's happening on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Nobody's taking a big picture overview. It doesn't matter whether the markets go up or the markets go down on a daily basis. You should be looking at the longer term perspective. But unfortunately, these headlines are often focused on what's happening today versus what went on yesterday or the day before. So you can get drawn into thinking that actually interest rates and inflation are no longer an issue to be thinking about because it's better than we thought it was going to be. But just because the markets are expecting the Fed to increase interest rates by 75 basis points and they only increased it by 50 basis points. That doesn't mean there's any cause for good news. The actual situation is that the Fed has increased interest rates by 50 basis points and interest rates are now sitting at 4.5%. That is really high compared to where we were 12 months ago. That is going to cause major problems for the US economy and the global economy because everybody else is following suit. As we saw earlier in the video, a lot of countries are introducing 50 or 75 basis point increases almost on a monthly basis. Now, these are record-breaking levels. Most countries around the world have never seen a 75 basis point increase at any time in their history. So one of these is groundbreaking news. That would be a monumental event. But we've seen multiple of these happening over the course of the last few months. So we've never seen a situation like this before. And the thing with interest rate increases is that they take time to actually have effect. Because generally speaking, most people are paying interest on their loans in arrears. So you find out at the end of the month how much more you had to pay. So it's only once you see that figure hitting your bank account that you think, ah, I've now actually got less money. You may be feeling that you've got less money, but you will actually have less money at the end of the month when it's debited from your account. And that's when it starts hurting. And unfortunately, because we've had consecutive interest rate increases, the price of debt is rising rapidly. And this is going to have a really big impact in 2023. So I wanted to make this video firstly to make that point. Secondly, I wanted to talk about inflation because we're not done on inflation. We are nowhere near the end of this road. There is a long way to go to get back to where all of the central banks want to be with the level of inflation. So there are more interest rate hikes coming at the start of 2023 and beyond. And the big question is, how quickly will those rates of inflation come back down? And that's why I wanted to show you what's going on with regards to oil and wheat prices, because the global price of all of these commodities is having a really big impact on inflation. And as we see oil prices coming down, by definition, inflation will slow down, irrespective of what you're doing to interest rates, because that's one of the biggest drivers. So the big question really is, what is driving inflation? Is it demand driven or is it supply driven? So let's talk about prices in very basic terms of supply and demand. So if you've got a situation where demand suddenly increases and supply remains relatively stable, then that will generally cause an increase in prices because everybody wants to buy something, there's a limited amount of supply, and so the price will go up to meet that increase in demand. And that very basic form of analysis is what the central banks are applying their logic to. They're assuming that increases in demand have caused prices to rise, and therefore by increasing interest rates, it reduces everybody's disposable income, it'll reduce demand, and therefore bring prices back down. But the flip side of the supply and demand argument is where things are going on with regards to supply. So if the cost of supply is going up, for example, because the price of oil globally is rising, then that will also push up prices. So inflation can be caused by supply driven issues. And if it is, then increasing interest rates actually won't have a major impact on that because if the price of oil stays high and you increase interest rates, that won't bring your inflation down much. All it will do is cause people pain because they'll have less money to be able to spend on more expensive things. And the reason I wanted to mention this is because I think that inflation is coming down right now partly as a result of the fact that oil prices and commodity prices have been coming down for the last six months or so, generally because we're going into this global recession. So we're going to see inflation coming down. But the question is, how rapidly will it come down? Will it get anywhere near 2% over the course of the next three to six months? And if it doesn't, what are the central banks going to do? Well, from my point of view, I don't think we're going to see inflation getting close to 2% until the end of 2023 or maybe even beyond that. It's going to be a long way from now. So the question then is, 
What will the central banks do? Will they keep repeatedly raising interest rates to try to get inflation down? Or will at some point they say enough's enough and we can't get there? We're going to have to set a new target rate of 5%, for example. Well, Jerome Powell from the Fed came out directly after their recent meeting and confirmed that the Fed are focused in on the target rate of inflation. So he's basically said, we will keep going. We will keep increasing interest rates. So that is really bad news for the US economy and the global economy because other central banks are likely to take the same approach. And therefore, I think as we go into 2023, we're going to see inflation coming down, but not rapidly enough to keep all these central banks happy. So therefore, we're going to see interest rates being increased rapidly. That's going to cause an acceleration in the slowdown in all of these economies. And it's likely that the recession will be made worse because interest rates are hiked too aggressively People and companies will be left with less disposable income and therefore GDP is likely to contract faster. So hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said today, please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end.